Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Sakai and potentially a Perio teaching and learning meeting uh, on June 10, 2015. This is Neil. I didn't even check to, to ask uh, Trisha, uh, did you want to leave this meeting or are you not prepared for that? Um, I, I'm i happy to do that if I need to. Uh, whichever way you want to go. It's fine with me. Okay. Well, you go right ahead, Neil. You're, you've already started. Okay. But I'm happy to step in whenever. Okay. You can, you <laughs> can uh, maybe take the next one just so okay. we keep it balanced out a little bit. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so on the agenda, just in case any people are joining late, we have uh, Etherpad link on the chat area. And the first item is just welcome and meeting launch. And the second one I, I threw on there real quickly because I thought it might be because uh, it's timely. There's some discussion on the list about renaming of the schedule buttons. That's for Sakai 11. So if you want to talk about that, we can give that like two to five minutes. Then takeaways from the Open Aperio conference uh, was the bulk of this meeting and discussing and scheduling uh, future meetings and agendas for future meetings um, and then wrap up. So does that sound good? Does anyone have any uh, additional items they want to put on there? Okay, we'll just go with that then. So I, I threw this on and I, thought, I think this is kind of maybe will be a good way to do things instead of having maybe in, maybe in addition to or instead of having like big meetings where we go through lots of JIRA tickets, maybe, you know, bringing up a JIRA ticket here or there uh, to get feedback would uh, would make sense. So this was on the list and I thought this would be of uh, interest to this group. If you click on um, the feedback on JIRA issue, SAK29165. You'll see uh, calendar subscription terminology is confusing to end users. And uh, there's an attachment uh, on there, an image. Um, I suppose I could share my screen, although that's always a little dicey. Let's see. Try it. Yeah, I'm getting a loop here. There we go. No, Fawi. Let's see. There we go. I think it's actually going to share. Now, what it's going to share, I don't know. Uh, okay. Move this over here, and this over here. All right, does everyone see that? Should we move that up? I see it. I think others do too. Okay. Chat. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so as you can see, the the uh, labels for. Um, for the schedule, it's being proposed that they're re renamed. And uh, so there's add event, import events, add internal calendar, add external calendar, share public URL, or maybe just share public, share private URL, or maybe just share private um, fields and permissions, and permissions would only be seen by the instructor. So open for comments. What does share mean, public and private? Well, um, it looks like Adam is on, but I'm not sure his mic is on. Uh, the share public URL, um, let's see, he put it in his, uh, I think the share private URL is sharing, well, let's say, add internal calendars, adding a calendar from another Sakai site, add external calendars, pulling in 
um, a calendar from an external site like a Google Calendar. Share public URL. Um, let me find that. Generate a URL for sharing with the general public. So you would actually generate a URL that you could share outwardly with anybody. And then the private URL is a for personal use and other calendar applications. So you could use it to, I presume, you know, put it in your Google Calendar and it could suck in your Sakai uh, events. Sorry, my microphone's on now. Okay, great. Sorry about that. <laughs> and I just missed the last few seconds. Okay, I was just explaining what I thought all those buttons meant. Especially yes, when you share uh, public and share private. Yeah, well, the, the private one, um, you get a really complicated URL, which nobody could possibly guess. And that is for your own kind of private sharing. So you can subscribe to it in, G, um, in the Google Calendar or Outlook or something like that. And if you accidentally um, give it away, you can regenerate a new one. Um, so it's a kind of non-guessable URL. The main use for it really is to for students to subscribe to their my workspace and then you get all the events from all your sites um like appearing in the in the feed which means they can appear in another calendaring application like maybe something on your phone or or outlook and the public one is um the that's the old one really and you can type in a name and it's a very nice readable url and you can it makes the calendar public uh in the sense that people can see it and then you can publish that on a website or, you know, hand it around as you want. So that's why there's two of them. And the only thing to say about that is I wondered whether the URL was actually necessary in there. So you could just have share public or share private. I thought that might be slightly, slightly simpler. As long as we're rethinking this, I have to tell you that as someone, this is Laura Gettler, someone who's new to this tool, share to me is a verb that's used when I'm going to um, involve at least one second person. And uh, if I'm sharing something that's private, I'm automatically confused because <laughs> there is no second person involved. Uh, private is something that involves one person. So. Well yeah, you aren't actually, you are actually, you aren't really sharing it with anybody else, but you are sharing it with another application. That was the kind of idea there, with other applications. How would export be clearer? Export implies that you're going to use it somehow, but it doesn't imply sharing necessarily. Well, the, the share public and share private, as I understand it, are sort of taking the place of the subscribe randomly named feeds button. It's just splitting it into two. Is that correct? Uh, no. Uh, no? That, that, that one is the share private. Okay. Um, yeah. I think, they, um, I, think, I think it maybe used to be called, be called um, uh, subscribe. Uh, I think both yeah, buttons. Subscribe, subscribe seems more applicable to me in terms of calendars. Because I would subscribe to an internal calendar or public calendar or maybe subscribe to a pri private calendar. That seems more um, logical for me in terms of, of the URLs um, versus share or export. Because export, I think of files. Yes. Like I'm yes, exporting indeed. a yeah, CSV yeah. Um, and, and sharing, like, like Laura mentioned, it, it implies that you're sharing with someone. So if it's a private share, that's kind of... Mm -hmm. So the, the share public is, is that one okay then? Because you are sharing that with, with anybody who wants it. That would be fine. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering for consistency if it's, you know, subscribe public, subscribe private, just to keep them kind of consistent. Because yeah. both of them are URLs that you're subscribing to. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I've got a feeling that's how it is at the moment, uh, and our users were getting very confused. So, oh, they, <laughs> was, they didn't like that. Okay. Well, yeah, they, I'm trying to. I'm looking at um, at version ten and trying to compare the buttons there to the buttons yeah. here. I was just and trying like to the, do that. The merge yeah. button seems to be split. Um, you have add internal calendar, add external calendar. Is that? 
yes See, we don't we don't actually have currently merge is just merge internal calendar basically so i don't think in 10 there's or at least the default version of 10 mm. has an add external option uh, no it's not activated by default on the test server no but i think it is i mean we use it okay. have done for years yeah, yeah yeah it's i'm looking at qa so it's probably turned off yes i'll just look in there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, right, okay, so we're not getting any closer to because <laughs> I think the, the problem we had with subscribe is that it sounds like you're trying to subscribe this calendar to something else, but actually it's the other way around. You're trying to, you're giving oh, the URL so you can, sub, as okay. another calendar can subscribe to this one. So it's it's kind of the opposite of subscribe really, it's it's kind of allow it, allow it to be subscribed to. What about publish? Would that be publish uh, URL? Yeah. Yeah, cause th th I mean, th yeah, yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah. It, it could be publish private and publish public. <laughs> that doesn't sound so good, does it? <laughs> but yes. Okay. It, it, it... Uh, so export um, resonated with me, except for the idea that uh, it thinks it's taking a file. What about extract? Yeah, that sounds even more like taking a file. And, and, and probably removing what was already there. I, I thought the publish idea was um, a pretty good one. Um, publish? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What about, gener and I, what about generate? You know, generate public URL, generate private URL. That's what it tells what the button is actually doing and, in, and implies what you want. Is that oh, true? yeah. Or just get. Public URL, get, 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 yeah, URL. Just get, get yeah. public URL, get private URL. Get. Why it's didn't nice you do that? Too. Overthinking this. Get, <laughs> get the URL. Oh my <laughs> word. And that's a really good point um, because um, subscribing, for example, to me implies some dynamic version. And I don't know if that's true or not, or if it's you're just getting a URL to a static point in time. I, I don't even know, actually. No, no, it's dynamic. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, but even so, uh, I like get, get URL. I, I think that is really clear. Get is you, um, you get a URL and then towards you. I think this is like pop, it's published sounds better to me. It's published like yeah, you yeah. generate this URL and then give it to someone else, share, a uh, give away. Get is so, so you, you go somewhere and to get towards you. Am I? I, I like publish. Yeah, yeah. This sounds quite good to me. Because that's what you were doing, really, isn't it? Yeah, Especially because the... I'm, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about all these event things. Like you uh, try to bring something into your calendar to. And some uh, activity here is that you try to um, publish out and mm. push it out, bring in and pu push it out. So it's two directions. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's why I don't like. I mean, get is a, such a simple, um, clear term. I completely agree, but uh, I think it's just uh, uh, yes, yeah, slightly uh, less uh, and it's slightly worse than how can I say? Less bad, <laughs> that's good, then then, mm -hmm. then then publish. I think publish is like better. Yeah, yeah, I can go with that. All right, well, I think we gave you more feedback than you may have wanted. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's really useful, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks for okay. reading. We'll have another round then. <laughs> okay. Someone tell me what the meaning of public is. Um, is that public to the internet or public yep. to the... Is that right? It's, a, it's public to the internet, com completely public, yeah. Wow, wonderful, that's what I would have expected. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I think we should wrap this this uh, topic up, it sounds like, and, and move on. Yeah, good, good, thank you. Okay, cool, thanks. Let me get the screen sharing off here. And let's see. If so many windows open, let me see if I can just close this screen share. So the next uh, topic, oh, I could, I guess I could have shared the uh, the Etherpad. Hmm. All right. So the next topic is uh, is um, the takeaways from the Open Aperio conference, and one of the 
one of the big uh, discussions we were having is around uh, making this group from teaching and learning for Sakai, just for Sakai, to making it open to uh, to Aperio, making it a Aperio level teaching and learning group. And I noticed at least one person on the call who's from OpenCast, hey Lars, and I don't know if there's other folks on here also. Uh, I see Ian's on and he could represent Aperio potentially. So I thought that might be a good place to, to start, but we all, uh, oh, hey, hey Rudiger. So, um, I thought that might be a good place to start the discussion is the interest in, in opening up this group to uh, excuse the background noise. Sorry about that. Um, to Perio. And uh, do you guys have any, uh, would you like to, to comment on that? Hi, here's Lars. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, I like the idea, so I'm at the moment a bit unaware of what this meeting is about. I got a last minute call that this meeting is right now, and so I don't know at the moment what to expect and uh, will sit quietly in this meeting, I guess. But in general, I like to uh, have uh, all the project talk to each other. I mean, can only help. Yeah, I think that's exactly the idea is that the projects can then talk with each other and share between each other and probably others in, are in a better position to comment on it than, than I am. But it does seem like, um, you know, kind of the agenda, the way we create the agenda for these meetings is it's open. So um, you can say, I would like that there's a particular topic that you would like to discuss and, um, and then we add it to the agenda and we schedule them out you know, weeks in advance so that people know which agendas might be most relevant to them. Um, and and um, so sometimes we get into tool specific, like you just saw us do with Sakai and a very specific issue in Sakai. And sometimes it's more general about how uh, a teaching and learning problem is, is solved. Well, I think the, um, the the major thought that we had in in having this as a, a perio wide teaching learning call is that the topics and the themes all revolve around teaching and learning. So there are other perio project uh, projects and communities who, because of because of uh, the nature of a perio, right, we're all higher ed. We're, were fundamentally about teaching and learning that this would be a good place for us uh, to all talk about and that all agenda items would um, rotate around the top the theme the theme of teaching and learning So I'm curious if anyone has, uh, you know, has any concerns. I guess the uh, concerns about uh, opening up to Perio. I guess you know one of the things we'll have to figure out logistically is making sure. Um, you have a question about generalization, Terry? Yeah, um, just the conversation seems to be very helpful about how to get Sakai to do what you want it to do. If we open up to other um, to other organizations within a perio is that are we going to lose that are we going to lose that ability to kind of drill down into a topic that works with sakai no i don't, I don't think so i think we can still have the same agenda items i think that's one of the things that will make um you know make some of the meetings a little interesting in that um, there'll be specific things on specific tools, including Sakai, and that may or may not be uh, uh, interested of interest, you know, depending on the community. But hopefully, there'll be some cross-learning that happens there and thinking about how 
different tools can apply to, to solving those problems. That's, that's how I'm thinking about it. Okay, well, that would be helpful then. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole point of how we keep them invited. So right now, we have a Sakai user list as the primary way we get the word out, and that's Sakai specific. So I don't know, you know, I don't, we just did a big transition of moving a whole bunch of um, email lists over uh, to Google Groups, and I don't relish the idea of suddenly kind of reconfiguring them. So I'm thinking a better way to do it would be to just make sure maybe we, uh, so figuring out a good way to communicate with the other projects to invite them not only to attend this meeting, but also to add items to the agenda, um, to do demos. Um, that's another part of it that, that we have as well, is people will do demos about how to use their tools um, and get feedback. Uh, and then see if, as that grows and as we're getting more participation from the other projects, then maybe think about do we want to have a different uh, email group for that. So that's one of the things I was, I was thinking about. Yeah, Laura, rename the teaching and learning Google group. That's possible, although right now I think it's, you know, uh, 99 or 100 percent Sakai. <clears throat> Neil. Yeah. yeah. Rather than replace the existing Sakai user mailing list, why don't we just export everybody in it and subscribe them to a new Aperio teaching and learning group, which we can have an open subscription on? Um, I mean, from my perspective, the agenda and the content of the calls and indeed the content of the lists should, should be driven by the community. So I don't think anybody's going to lose anything. There is a real possibility to gain some interactions in in each direction, you know, between the, the sub-communities involved. But I do think we probably need a, an Aperio wide list for folks to subscribe to without necessarily getting rid of the Sakai specific one that we have at present. So help me think about this a little bit more, help the group think about it a little bit more. So for Sakai questions, we would still have that interaction on the Sakai user list, but, and then we would use the a Perio level one for um, just talking about this particular meeting where we come together? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think there's still a specific need for community lists for, for particular communities. You know, users of Opencast really don't want to be on a list that, that see 200 Sakai queries go by a day. I think the more general list can deal with the more general type discussions whereas Sakai user might actually turn into something that's just very specific to Sakai. Okay, well, uh, are there other, what, what's your reaction to that idea? I see some on the, on the chat. It looks like on the chat that people are thinking it's a good idea. So what we can do is post to the Sakai user list and uh, and let them know about the creation of this alternative list and what the difference is. And uh, I see generally, I think more collaboration is a positive thing from Matt and sounds like a good way to involve people from all projects. So it sounds like it's worth, uh, worth an experiment. <clears throat> and I'll, like I said, I'll publish the list and see if uh, just to give people um, a chance to, to respond and think about it. And does anyone have a any reason we should hold off on doing this? Like, should we uh, wait a couple of weeks and have a discussion on list or just sort of go for it? I think rather than an automatic subscription, we can probably allow people to subscribe themselves when the uh you know when the when the list is spun up. So let's let's spin the list up over the next few days and and take it from there. Okay, sounds good. And I guess for what I'll do, we can do for the initial invitations is for a while, for some period of time, what I'm we could uh, post notifications of the agenda and call for agenda items to both the Sakai user and the Aperio uh, level list. Do we call it like a Perio user? Is that a good good? 
I think it really should label itself as as teaching and learning. A perio teaching and learning. Isn't that kind of a long name though for a list? Well, I guess we could have it called the perio teaching and learning as a group and and have a shortened um, email address. All right, sounds good. And then, what, like I said, what I'm thinking is that we would have both of them going in parallel. We'd have uh, send announcements about this meeting to both the Sakai user and the Aperio teaching and learning for a little while, and eventually let the Sakai user list know that we're we're just going to make those announcements on uh, the teaching and learning list or something like that. I'm thinking about it would be nice to kind of get that transition and get that culture going and have people motivated to move onto that list. I agree, and I can mail uh, other projects because I'm I'm not sure there's anybody from from Zerti here or associated with it, but that's certainly another another one of our software communities who I I feel would like to participate. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so uh, so decision made. Um, excellent, thank you, and. I guess uh, the other part of this was just kind of an open, um, open discussion on anything people wanted to bring bring forward from the discussions um, at Aperio from the teaching and learning discussion. We could do a round robin if that would, you know, just to get uh, get things going. If you'd like, we never tried that on the on the webcast here. Yeah, let's, I think doing a round robin is a good idea, and then people can, you know, mention one or two things that stood out for them. Okay. So let's go down the list, uh, if it's okay, in alphabetical order, and uh, think about like one or two things that uh, that really stood out for you from the conference um, that you'd like to share. Um, so Adam, did you have any, you know, one or two things? All right, I see your your comment about Zerte. Okay. No mic. Ah. Well, then I guess we can go to uh, to Beth. Nothing. Okay. We're just doing a round robin to to see one or two things that you got out of the the conference. Fawai, I'm not sure were you uh, at the conference. I was I wasn't at the conference, um, but I do have a question I can ask later on if if I may. Sure. Uh, about the lessons too, I want to get some feedback on the proposal I made uh, on the mailing list yesterday. I posted. Um, yeah, I want to create a J round to get a, a, a feedback on, on on that proposal. If, if, if I may, yeah, later on. Uh, so as a proposal, proposal on uh, lessons? Yeah, yeah yes, to, to how to improve one feature in the lessons too. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't take very long. Should I say now or quickly? Um, or, or you want to talk about the, the, the conference first? Uh, let's do the conference first since we try to kick yeah. that off and then we'll put time. Is, did you, can you put it on the agenda? So do you have the, uh, the, um, the JIRA? Uh, I haven't created Jira yet. I just want to get some feedback from the people before okay. I create Jira. Yeah. Okay. So, like five minutes will be enough for you, you think? Uh, five minutes is plenty. You know, probably only need two, three minutes. Okay. Okay, great. We'll make sure to budget some time. Okay, Thanks. Adam. I, yeah, sure. Adam, you have a comment or two from the conference? Yes, sorry, I keep turning my microphone off so, so you don't hear me talking. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I thought it was it was great from the Sakai point of view. I, I didn't really go to any other talks apart from Zerti, but uh, I was just enthused because of you know the new Morpheus portal, and we've got two new tools. We've got the announcements tool and um, the dashboard, and also well, Oxford are putting forward their feedback tool. So it just seems to me it's going to be the biggest Sakai release for for years, if not ever, really, since we started. I think it's something to be really, really enthusiastic and pleased about.
Oh, could you not hear me? Now I can hear you better. All right. I was saying I was very, very enthusiastic about all the new tools we've got. Well, we've got Morpheus to start with. Then there's uh, the uh, the PA tool, uh, the dashboard tool, and there's going to be a contact us tool, and there's going to be you know improvements to Gradebook, and uh, it just seems to be a really big Sakai release with lots of new features, all really good, all really exciting, and uh, very much to look forward to. Okay, thank you. Um, so going down the list, uh, Beth, if you change your mind, I want to. Jump in, feel free. Uh, uh, Fawe already had a turn. Uh, Gwen, did you attend the uh, Perio conference? No? Okay. Uh, Jennifer? Yes, this is the first one I attended. Um, so I was really glad to actually meet some of you folks in person. And we have got a lot of information that we can use for building out the future of our implementation with Sakai. Um, I enjoyed seeing all of the new tools, as Adam mentioned, just some new things that I hadn't heard about uh, coming up and some things other schools are doing as well. So it gave us a good um, brainstorming kickstart for our school. Okay, thank you. Um, Jolie? Well, actually, J Jerry, did you attend? Yeah, I sure did. Hey, guys. Oh, cool. Uh, so uh, two big takeaways. Um, we wanted to thank Adam for the uh, Turnitin boff. It was really nice to see the timetable and get an update on that integration. That's something that was really important to us, so that was really great to see. And uh, we had an update. We showed off uh, the question progress feature inside of Samago that we've been working on, which allows students to kind of jump around questions and see ones that they've answered and ones that they haven't. Now, after we came back from the conference, we had a couple of emails about when it would be available. So we're going to spend a sprint or two in July working to get that community ready. So hopefully by the end of the summer, we need to grab for folks. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Jolie? Hi. Wow, Jerry, I'm really glad you just mentioned that because like Adam, I was really excited about all the projects that I knew about already, the enhancements projects, and then I learned about new projects that I didn't even, well, wasn't even aware of, like uh, Texas State's attendance tool. Um, and then your, your enhancement that you're working on. Um, I think the only other thing that really stood out to me, um, other than all these new things that are coming, is, you know, discussions to kind of look beyond that and start talking about um, vision, uh, vision for Sakai. Um, those are the two things that really stood out for me. Thanks. Um, Lars? Sadly, I wasn't able to go to the Open Perio, but, uh, well, we are currently hard-pressed to get uh, OpenCast 2 out. So I will meet the release manager in a couple of minutes, and hopefully in a week we, or in a week and a half, we will have the 2.0 release of that. So that might be interesting for some. Thank you. Uh, Laura? Laura Spira? Hi, yeah, this is Laura number two from Notre Dame. Um, that was also my first uh, Perio conference, so I not only enjoyed meeting everybody face to face and getting to sit and really talk through some things with them, but also uh, the biggest thing for me was uh, the grade book revision, um, sitting with the, the group in there, talking through what it is that our um, professors and students are wanting out of Gradebook, because you know, we all recognize this is just a huge tool in Sakai that everybody really, really wants to see improved upon since we had Gradebook 2, and they, they were using Gradebook 1 to make it a little better. I was really sold on it. I walked in not thinking I would like it, and I walked out of there thinking it was going to be a really great addition to, to Sakai at Notre Dame. So. Um, I was really excited about that part of it. And this is the original Laura here at Notre Dame, Laura Geckler. Um, I get to be the original, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what did I get out of the conference? I went, I went to the conference looking for vision and roadmap and, um, and found that other people wanted to see that for Sakai as well. But, the conversations didn't coalesce 
to the degree I was hoping for. So we'll have to um, we'll have to figure out what another venue could be to sort of chart what it looks like going forward. Uh, the second one, I really benefit from the conference because I get to meet all of you. And one of the things aside from projects is, uh, is how we support informed use of our tools and, and uh, methods and technologies so that the that faculty at our institutions use the right thing at the right time. And so I, I look for networking opportunities to hear you know, what's working at your institution and how you, how you um, see your teaching and learning services. And I guess, yeah, that's enough for me. Thanks. Thanks. Matt? Yeah, I thought that there were a lot of great things. Uh, obviously, people have talked about Morpheus and how great it looks and what a great upgrade it's going to be for all of us once it's available. I think people have talked a lot already about lessons and how exciting that is and the additional functionality that's coming to it. To me, building off some of the things that Laura just said, I think that going forward, something that's very interesting to me is how we're going to market the product that we already have, the great things that it can already do, the things that it's going to be able to do going forward. Because as somebody said in one of our box sessions, open source people suck at marketing. <laughs> and I think that's generally pretty true. And I think that we need to do a better job and maybe work together to figure out how to do a better job of engaging users, finding out what they already like, finding out what they need, and helping them to get what they need, because I think our product can already do a lot of that stuff. Some of the sessions that University of Wisconsin talked about, about user testing and how they worked with users to figure out what they needed to do in terms of making changes really resonated with me, because I think that kind of stuff is going to be great for us going forward. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Nick? Uh, you weren't there? Okay. Thanks. Uh, Rudiger, if I'm pronouncing your right name right, uh, not on the conference. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll be interested in, in uh, knowing, I know the conference committee was interested in knowing uh, how folks uh, like the videos that were recorded. Not every session got recorded. Um, a lot of them have, have materials and slides on the lanyard site, though, as well. Um, Terry. Okay, could not attend. Trisha? Hey, yeah, pull up some of my notes. Oh. Um, yeah. right. I don't know if that was me or just feedback. Um, you know, uh, the teaching and learning box uh, raised a few interesting um, points. And one of the things that talked about what I had forgotten about was um, some uh, the learning design lenses and I just posted a link in chat there to a graphic that he shared um, which, you know was an effort to sort of conceptualize categorize um, the aspect of learning and with Sakai in general um, so, you know, um, I like that a lot because I was where someone had taken uh, Longsight's excellent uh, uh, certification for Sakai um, to their own institution and sort of uh, uh, category of activities rather than tools. Um, workshops to to frame uh, presentations and workshops and I really I think the learning capabilities um, uh, speaks to that. Um, some of the other things that specifically in the session that resonated with with me and we extending the teaching group to and gaps um, and incorporating other things, not only into Sakai, but bringing up 
our um, technologies to our institutions, and we'll learn about those more by um, expanding the scope of the teaching and learning group to include other events. So I'm I'm strongly in favor of that. Um, future of the LMS. Uh, let, oh, data portability was it came up a couple of times, and I think that's an important area that that we could look at going forward as well. Um, that Sakai doesn't do exceptionally well at all. Um, but I know that that is becoming important. Students make stuff with them, the faculty want to make stuff with them. Um, and so uh, that would be a really uh, interesting um, area to, to explore. So I'll stop talking. I know that was uh, oh, I'm breaking up. I'm so, so sorry. Shoot. I was saying so many wonderful things. <laughs> that was, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I will post, post them in the pad <laughs> instead of trying to repeat them. Okay. Thanks, Tricia. Sorry we couldn't hear you better. Wilma? Sorry. Of the time. Um, we'll well, since I'm the last one, I'll be fast. And uh, most people said a lot of the things that I um, gathered from the conference already, but it was really exciting to see a lot of the enthusiasm around some of the projects like STEP and LEAP and Gradebook. Um, I think one thing that stood out for me was um, a lot of conversations about um, how to raise additional funding so that a lot of these projects can have a phase two. So um, I know Neil and I were talking about the farm concept of um, crowdsourcing funding for different projects. So that was something that, um, that stood out for me. Another thing that I thought was a, a great takeaway was that there seemed to be a good amount of interest in additional UX testing. We did a few UX sessions on Monday, and um, and I talked to some folks about it during the week. And so there seemed to be a lot of interest in people doing um, more usability testing throughout the development cycle, which I thought was great. And um, and finally, there was a lot of excitement about um, doing another Sakai virtual conference in the fall. So um, so that was great to to hear that people were excited about last year and wanted to do it again. And um, and one thing that occurred to me as we were talking about, um, you know, expanding our teaching and learning group to be an imperial level group, I'm thinking maybe um, for the virtual conference, we expand that to be an imperial virtual conference and have other sessions if, you know, people wanted to present something on Zerte or, or any of the other projects that are involved. Um, you know, I think that might be a great addition to the, the virtual conference. So that's it for me. Okay. Well, this is Neil. I actually didn't go, but I, I noticed we're really short on time. But yeah, I think a lot of things I was thinking were reflected here because I've been thinking about marketing. I think Sakai 11 is a great opportunity to market. And if we actually knew how to do that, that would be awesome. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we'll figure a way to do that. Cause I think it's just a, such a great opportunity when we're, you know, rolling out, as Adam was saying, such a major revision of the tool. That's a perfect time to do marketing. So we, I think we need to figure out something as a community, even if it's not perfect, we should try. Um, and met, uh, Wilma mentioned the, for the fundraising, which we're calling FARM, uh, Funding and Resource Management. And I'm going to talk to you, Wilma, offline, but I'm thinking we need to sort of get, you know, have, I've, I got a lot of interest uh, at the conference. A lot of people thought that's a great idea at the Aperio level. So, um, you know, so uh, I expect to hear more from that um, and some more ideas coming down there. And I also heard the... Um, you know, I've noticed that, that a lot of people want a roadmap, which every year for Sakai, it seems like that's the case. And I noticed that, you know, Notre Dame's interested. Uh, Marist is, is completely interested. Duke University is interested. I mean, if we have uh, enough of these, you know, heavy-hitting uh, universities and colleges really wanting this to happen, we can make it happen, I think. Uh, um, there is an unconference uh, that's going to be in Montreal September 30th to October 2nd. Um, that's typically, you know, that's a possibility. We could maybe leverage that existing unconference format to, um, uh, and there Ian's mentioning, let's, you know, make sure not to, not to conflict the uh, virtual conference with the unconference, um, which I think is a, a really good point. 
So that's something I wanted to mention is that, you know, if there's energy in the community to create a roadmap, uh, then we need to find a way to make it happen. And maybe that's leveraging the young conference or maybe that's uh, finding another way to have some sort of retreat focused on on Sakai. Uh, because there's a recognition that as great as Sakai 11 is, is going to be, um, we need to be thinking about, you know, three, five, ten years down the road um, and re-envisioning. So that's what I had to say. I noticed we only got about 15 minutes, so it's a bit tight. Um, Fawe, do, uh, do you want to quickly kind of mention your thing, and then we'll see if we can uh, start thinking as, uh, about topics that you're either willing to present on this session or questions that you have, so we can sort of start building agendas for the next upcoming meetings. But, but Fawe, you said you wanted to, to bring something up for a couple minutes. You still there, Fawe? You're on mute. Okay. Thanks, Wilma. So, uh, okay, Fawe, what I'm not I'm not hearing you. So, uh, I'm not sure. All right, so we'll move on unless oh your mic is running out of battery. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Well, we can put you on the next agenda if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, for next time. Okay, so um, so then the final agenda item is uh, so what we've been doing we did successfully and we kind of um, intentionally held off because of the conference, but we didn't specifically ask at the conference is um, is what are topics that people are either interested in participating you know either presenting so we've had a lot of times when people present um, feedback they're getting at their institution and the way that they're using uh, Sakai or other tools um, or asking a question. And that they want to have a discussion about. So Terry writes she'd like he'd like uh, she'd like to hear about the development of Al of Alsys. Okay. Um, we'll need to find a volunteer to see if they can present on Alsys. Sounds like a good one. Any other questions or ideas? Need to drop off. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Okay, Adam, that sounds great. Are there other people we should invite Adam to that particular talk discussion? Zerte, yeah. I've been hearing a lot. I've heard a lot at the conference about Zerte. People are really interested in it. So I will outreach to the Zerte folks and ask them if they would be uh, happy to do a session with us. Okay, Fawai, thanks. Other uh, other topics or questions people have? Um, Neil, Neil, I don't. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I uh, I just wanted to. I don't know if you mentioned it, but um, Louisa had mentioned a session focus on um, things in lesson and and then work on creating areas around do we want to make an item um so you're you're breaking up a bit um ah. yeah i mean it sounded like you were talking about louisa and probably i'm assuming it's the lessons tool you're talking about the leap lessons enhancements and specifically what, what are you uh, wanting to discuss around that, the, the, the enhancements that are coming for Sakai 11 or um, input for beyond Sakai 11 or Jira's to check for, for Jeff to work on now. That's a good, that's a good topic. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, open cast. Okay, open cast guys, I don't know if you're still on the line. Would you be willing to do a presentation a little bit uh, and do a little Q&A? Great. So um, 
Let me know a good day. As you know, we meet Wednesdays at 10 a.m., so just if you could pick a Wednesday that will work for you, uh, then that would be really awesome. Yeah, Tricia, um, definitely uh, there's a lot going on with, with LEAP, and we will make sure to loop, uh, loop the community back, back in um, and have a presentation. I'm not sure the timing is right because we're kind of focusing heavily on uh, figuring out what to do with Sakai 11. Um, so we had uh, LTI. Laura G said LTI. What about LTI? Specifically, just a general conversation. Third-party tools plugged into Sakai LTI. Oh, okay. Third-party tools, pick one a session. Okay. Uh, so that's a great start uh, for a list. I'm wondering if anyone is ready for a discussion for next week. Like, can we do a analysis discussion next week? Is uh, Adam, are you available? I'm not sure if you're still on. Yeah, it looks like you are. Just a tick. Not sure what that means. Call everywhere, Piazza, turn it in, verse veracity, verse site, how you pronounce that. Okay. If we can get one scheduled for next week and we can start working on getting the other scheduled, it would be really cool. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to do analysis for next week, and then we'll, um, you know, I guess we can keep a little more brainstorming. This is going so well. Library res reservations, sure. Are you talking about e-reserves or reserve other types of reservations? And Piazza, well, Laura, we have um, we have uh, Valsis for next week. Would you be willing to do the week after that? Cool. Oh, just 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Sign-up tool, okay. We need a volunteer for this one. Um, library reservations, okay. Any other ideas? This is great. Cool. Okay. Um, Right. Panel for the, uh, that sounds good for the sign-up tool. So we'll do panel for sign-up tool. Where's sign-up tool here? Oh, okay, we got volunteers. Let's say panel, uh, Oxford, and UVA. And let's see, I'm missing some things going by here. Oh, bye, Jennifer. See you next week. Uh, warp wire, cool. Uh, warp wire. So all now we need are some dates, which we got some. So we're thinking, I don't know if Valsis and if we'll have enough time for Valsis and uh, Piazza next week, but we can try that and see how that works out. Let's see, and then um, if other people want to put some dates on some of the other things, and we'll need to find somebody to present on podcasts and polls. Late June, great. And late July, okay. Do we have any uh, volunteers? I, I'm not sure if I missed it on uh, podcasts, Sakai podcasts and polls. Not yet, okay. I'll make sure to put Leap on here too. Sure, we'll want to do that. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, when does data want to present their library e reserve system? You want to do it uh, two weeks from today, which would be what, the 24th? How's the 24th sound? Cool. Oh, except for the 24. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Okay. Um, what's after the 24th? Is that like July, getting into July? July 1st. Okay. July 1st works. All right. The only thing I worry about July 1st is that's that's a uh, late that's um the week of July 4th. I think the but since it's only the first, it probably will have still good attendance. But um, and it's Wednesday. All right. Well, that seems like a great start. Any uh. Okay, eighth would also work. All right, I think let's shoot for the first, and if we get low attendance, then we'll worry about it. But I have a feeling we'll, we'll probably get good attendance. Um, okay, let's see. So that's a that's an awesome start. And August fifth, that sounds fine. Maybe August fifth, maybe we'll put you down for August fifth if you need to change it. Let us know, Jolie. And um, third party tools, I guess, Laura. You're suggesting doing one at a time, which is the Piazza thing, so we can do it that way. And I forget if we got uh, time from the OpenCast guys, or they had to jump off already. Um, a good time for us would be in three to four weeks, as we are getting the new release ready now, and would be interested to present what we have then there. Okay. So what date would that be, or what, what are some good dates for a good date for you? Uh, let's see. Um, Mid of July, I would say, would be a good uh, date. So we already dis somebody asked for the eighth. So how about the fifteenth, for example? Yeah, I think so. They think the eighth. They're going for the first. So you could do the eighth or the fifteenth. The fifteenth sounds fine. Um, all right, I think that covers it. Let's see. We have next week. Next week. Lessons to discussion and development. Is there a day we need to get? We need to get podcast and polls, volunteer, or some people who want to talk about how they're using it. Lessons, Jira's for Chuck H to work on, so we can schedule time for that. Um, lessons and Hanson Project, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, OpenCast July 15th, third party tools, general category, 8th next week in July, July. I think we I think we got a great start here. So um, we'll put together the um, schedule and we'll post it on the teaching and learning uh, confluence page uh, which also makes me think that if we make this in a perio group we might need a different place to post I'm wondering where you know I guess we can keep posting on confluence for now um, I don't know if there's a better p place to post for a perio level stuff but any any thoughts on that or I'm not going to worry about it too much right now but all right. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciated um, all the lively participation. And uh, um, are there any final words or thoughts or announcements before we sign off here? Oh, thanks, Tricia, for posting the link to the Confluence page. Hey, thanks, everyone. Always oh, like ending uh, ending on time. Bye. And you get the next one, Tricia. Okay. Stop recording now.